The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Taco Tuesday, the February 11th edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. Now, how do you really apply that in life, folks? It's about always reframing things. You and I, we've got the control to be able to reframe anything we want in life. Look, what I want you to know is I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, really. I mean, you've decided to spend the next 60 minutes with me. And, and if you are, I want you to know that this show is all about you. Now, what I mean by that is I'm here to assist you in taking a look at any instrument uh, for any time frame and helping you to identify what the charts are communicating to you and I out there. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to lush show right now we got the dow trading up 57 points 29 334 is the print the s p is up 17 about a half a percent nasdaq 100 up 64 points seven tenths percent to the upside russell 2000 up almost nine tenths percent 14 points the semis another strong day two and a half percent to the upside out there so everything looks good the spot volatility it's just trading down 64 pennies at 1440 we'll go check on that for sure because the question is going to be will it close today below Low the 50 day exponential moving average. You've got gold off 11 bucks, silver down 23 cents. Light sweet crude up 54 pennies. Natural gas is up just a tad, and that's where we're going to begin our day. But first, we're going to go out to Martinez, California, and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing just fantastic, Steve. It's, uh, we've been having some really nice weather out here and, and, uh, and trying to take advantage of that. How about yourself? How are you doing? Yeah, you know, it's uh, th this year's weather, speaking of weather, uh, been been kind of uh, strange down here. We've gotten so I don't know if you're familiar with with uh, Florida, um, but just about um, I'll say maybe about 40, 50 miles north of here is a gigantic lake, Lake Okeechobee. And uh, usually it, it, it acts as kind of a weather system to kind of block a lot of the cold air that comes down here. But it, has been, it doesn't have very good blocking capabilities this year. But on the other hand, um, I, I've got this back porch that I sit on every evening and um, you know, overlook the water and everything. And it has been just the ideal temperature to just sit outside, pair of shorts and a T-shirt and everything. So I'm kind of actually loving it. I don't like the cold morning starts in the 50s out there, but that's kind of your weather, isn't it? Uh, what, what do you, what's the morning temperature like uh, today out, out in Martinez? What was it like today? That's been pretty chill. I've been trying to go. I, I take hikes almost every day. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a really nice open space within. I don't have to drive there. I just jog to the trailhead and then I go mm -hmm. up to the the, uh, the mountain there and and uh, just very scenic. Just really beautiful place. And I've been lucky enough to go there for. Matter of fact, it's been 30 years this year that I've been going up there. So. Oh, that's um, great. This, very fortunate to have that, and I just I started going a little earlier starting just this week because it's starting to get light enough now where I used to always just go after my life. wife already went to work, and now I'm trying to go before she goes. And so um, 
Well, it sounds I, like a uh, great way. Sounds to me, it looks like a great way to begin your day out there. Just a nice way to just kind of free the cobweb, so to speak, and uh, and begin anew out there. So it's a beautiful one. So so let's talk about natural gas out here. And uh, UNG, I know, is what you had called about. Tell me what you're looking at and how I can help you. It's actually the, the contract itself is, is what I'm interested in. And, and okay. specifically, what I'm hoping you can do, I'm not sure if you're going to have this capability or if you've actually done much in the way of looking at this aspect of it, but I want to go back kind of longer term and see if there has been times in the past where it's been down at these lower levels like it is pretty beaten up and then has rebounded this time of year because in my mind, just thinking about it logically, we're going into a time of year that at least seasonally wouldn't be that beneficial to it. But I was just wondering if there had been times in the past where it, it, it still come off the bottom, even though it was not necessarily a time of year that would, you know, you would think logically would be a time for it to do it. That's my question. Got it. Okay. So let's, um, let's, so I, from a seasonal standpoint, whoops, what the heck is happening out here on my chart? Things are going crazy. What did I do? What did I do? Good Lord. There we go. Okay. So uh, there, from a seasonal perspective, Brent, um, I don't have any charts that I could put up on my screen. I do know that Mr. Bill follows this and inside of uh, the Thinkorswim platform, I believe there is some type of ability to get some seasonal um, behavior. Mr. Bill, I know you're, I know you're listening in. Uh, in your, I know he's going to try to post something. If I can grab it, I'll, I'll show it. But, but Mr. Bill, do you that, that seasonal? Is that just a daily time frame? Can you look at it going back further? I don't recall what the. But let me answer your your first question here, and that is, I've got natural gas on the quarterly chart out here. So I've got the continuous contract. Um, I don't know if this will let me go back before 2005 or not. But you know, we've got it for for quite a period of time. So the low out here on the continuous contract for natural gas. Uh, that I have, it actually formed a TD setup nine count. And that was in March of 2016. And the price down there, just as far as the uh, price level, it got down to a low of 161. 1.61, we're at 177 right now. So yes, it's been back into that into this area out here. That would, in essence, be the swing point test that one might look for. On a quarterly basis, I don't have any type, this says monthly. I must have, this is a monthly chart. I must have accidentally deleted my quarterly chart. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brent. Uh, but that doesn't but matter. But that's it helpful. Still takes... even, even what you're showing is helpful. That, that kind of coincides with what my question. So it, it did do it. You know, we'd have another month or so to go. But, you know, it might, you know, follow yeah. the same so type I, of pattern say... and, and, and hit that. <laughs> Sure. So let's just say seasonally speaking. So in April 2012 was another period of time where natural gas got lower. It formed with a TD set of nine count as well. Uh, and uh, and that was in April. That was 2012. Then you've got March 2016. You know, so now we're coming into uh, 2020 out there. What was it? 16 to 19. That was about or 12. That was, I'm sorry. That was 12 to 16. So four years, 16 to 20. Hey, maybe you're on to something, Brent. <laughs> maybe you're on to yeah, this, uh, to a big <laughs> cyclical, to yeah. a four-year cyclical pattern out there. Um, but let's pay it to I, I, my recommendation. We're about to go off the air here for a commercial. You can you can stay if, uh, on if you want. Um, but uh, price is moving lower, doing less relative energy. If you see some type of bullish reversal candle, that might identify the bottom in the natural gas contract. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back. Uh, Brent, uh, I'll, you stay on if you'd like. I, I'm gonna stay. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Well if you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're taking a look at natural gas. And Brent, uh, uh, during the break here, I went ahead and uh, on my screen is the chart that Mr. Bill in the Den uh, prepared for us. This is using the data from Thinkorswim. Uh, this is a five-year time period, so it's averaging the last five years by day, and it's a squiggly line that you would be following here. And you can see on this chart that it's in the, between the February and March time frame, similar to what we just looked at on that monthly chart, but that was a four-year period, uh, where four-year cycle period, I suppose, that we were looking at. So it looks like the, the big bottoms in natural gas would form around this time of the year, mid-February, and then about mid-October. Uh, in the mid-October, you know, uh, recently has had the largest moves to the upside out here. Uh, but nonetheless, before we uh, went to a uh, break, and Mr. Bill, thanks for uh, posting that up. Much appreciated. What I mentioned was that we, we now have natural gas. Yesterday was the first trigger of it, using my uh, roads momentum indicator signals, where price began moving lower, doing less relative energy. And, and should we see a bullish reversal candle? And yesterday's was a fairly wide body candle out there. We don't have that today at, at this stage of the game. In fact, if anything, today was just a rejection of my daily oscillator and change line, the red line. That value right now about 1.782 was a number. Uh, so if we did see some type of bullish reversal signal, we should at least see price 
bounce up to about 1.907. That's the top of the current daily profile, and that was resistance out there. I would say if we ever see a close above that, that would suggest to us a change in uh, trend out here. But nothing uh, just yet, and even on the shorter-term time frames out here, and by shorter-term time frames, Brent and folks, I'm looking at a 30, a 60, and a 120-minute time frame. What Price has been has failed to do is be has been able to clear a prior breakdown area, and the breakdown area I'm looking at on the 30-minute time frame chart is a buck 80, 1.08. So. Uh, 1.80, my apologies. So that's what I see at this stage of the game, Brent. What other questions uh, about natural gas or anything else can I uh, help you with? I guess my only comment would be, Steve, that, that uh, I'm just sensing a little bit. This reminds me a lot of the whole uh, 2015 going into 2016. We had, had like a protracted bear market and a lot of commodities, and when they came off of that low, it's for me, one of my better, you know, <laughs> just being able to make money in that, that whole transition, you know, once it made that turn. Yes. So I'm thinking this has similar potential. Well, it's yet to be seen, but something I'm following pretty close, and I just that's very helpful to, to go back and look at some of the longer-term stuff. And I'm just going to keep watching it, uh, but I do think there's some potential there, and I think it's one that's worth keeping an eye on. So that's why I'm at at this point on it. No, no, for, for sure. Because at some point in time, commodities are certainly going to uh, uh, ch uh, change. Uh, and uh, one of the one of the two one of the tools, and I don't know what the weighting is of different commodity instruments inside it, but it's the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, which is GSG. And uh, and, and I'm just going to pull over my other charts just so we can take a look at it and see if there's you know any kind of a bottom signal out here. And there there isn't on it at this stage here. Uh, for the D GSG, we'd be looking at at least a close of about 1444 to signal some kind of. Uh, at least change in trend or anything on the weekly basis. Uh, let me just update this. I don't have any signal other than to suggest that this might pull back to 1403 and find support out here. That's its breakdown support. This had held once before, not that far away. The monthly time frame chart, I don't have anything out here. And it's really just been so. So if we take your thesis about just commodities in general and we look at this uh, monthly time frame chart, it just looks like a bunch of accumulation going on along the bottom. You know, not a lot of price movement out there, just kind of a sideways-ish move. And uh, typically those are, once they do take hold, those are the big moves to the upside. How long it's going to take, you know, that I don't know. We'll see the signals, certainly. We'll see things change on a daily time frame. But right now they also are fairly, fairly depressed levels out here. Yeah, I think there's just some patience is in order and, and uh, again, just something to keep following. And I know that you're on top of it, and as well as others. So I think that when we do get that turn, it's it'll it'll be something that you know, we'll be aware of and and try to take advantage of. Hopefully, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Brent, uh, good to speak to you, and uh, look forward to speaking to you again. Thanks for calling. All right, in today. take care, Appreciate Steve. It. Absolutely, thank you very much, and just have a great day. You bet. My pleasure. That was Brent in Martinez, California. I believe Ruby wanted to take a look at sugar. Is that correct, Ruby? Um, I'm going to go ahead and punch that in on the uh, screen right now. Now, I'm going to put up the continuous contract here. Uh, all the information will still be accurate, uh, wave counts, things of that sort. Uh, the reason I'm putting it out here is that uh, I can take a look at uh, with the continuous contract. What the heck is going on? Oh, I have a bad spike in this thing again today. Oh, what the heck? Well, okay, so Ruby, I, I was going to do this, but we're not going to do that now because I don't know why there's this bad spike here, and that's just simply going to throw everything off. So instead, what I have to do, we'll go take a look at the current contract and take a look at profile levels and see what other information we might be able to glean from it. So give me just a second to get back here, and we'll pull up uh, sugar out here. Uh, here we go. So here's the March contract for sugar. We'll do the best we can. So... Oh, I know what I can do for you, because um, I do have the sugar contract uh, that's not been hampered. I won't refresh this, 
So here, here's what we have for sugar right now. I'm afraid that if I refresh, I'm going to get that bad spike. So today, Ruby is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup night. Now you see a nice A to B equals CD to the upside. Price is moving higher with less relative energy, or at least it appears to be. Again, if I hit my update key, I don't want to do that. And price is above its daily profile out here. So I, I don't see, I just, I just see caution. Uh, not a reason to exit the trade uh, just yet. Um, you know, this the TD9s, the 9s work fairly well on sugar. If you look back here in uh, September of 2019, form with that as a, a bottom. Uh, we had a TD9 count back in September. It was just really a little bit of a hiccup, uh, so to speak, out there. We had a TD9 count uh, top out here in December. That moved, that, that created a sideways move as well. Um, another TD9 count in the middle of January. That really did nothing uh, to it. Uh, that you know, there was a little bit of a pullback, but I, I can't say it was because of that pattern for sure. Um, so you've just got another one coming, and it would be a time to just be cautious out here, I, I suppose, in sugar. I may have. Let me see if I still have it up somewhere. Do I have it? Does Stevo have it? Stevo, yeah. So here's another thing you could look at, Ruby. And, that, and here, these are your 30 minute, 60 minute, and two hour time frames. And the levels that you'll be watching here would be the breakout area. So on a 30 minute time frame, we can see that another TD9 count has formed. And uh, that gives us a nice support level of 1507. So you would really need to see a close below 1507 to say, okay, maybe I want to go ahead and take my profits if you were long out here, uh, or if you're looking to go short, you know, you'd at least need to see a key level of support broken. Underneath 1507, you're looking at 1456. And on the two hour time frame, or some one hour time frame, it's a 1447. On the two hour time frame, it's 1456. So I hope that helps you out with regard to no sugar tonight in my coffee. Brought to you by the Guess Who. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dollar 39 S&P 15, NASDAQ up uh, 55. Let's go to uh, our first question here by email. This is coming in from uh, Brad. Brad uh, writes and says, uh, your take on Yang's pullback out here. So let's go ahead and pull up Yang. Yang is a, a triple ETF, uh, the uh, daily FTSE China bear uh, three times. Uh, does the huge upside volume on its recent rise indicate an A leg of an A to B equals CD move? Being a uh, pullback is on lighter volume. It's a possibility. And here, if you look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here, this is what. Let me just grab an arrow key uh, out here. Give me a second. Let's make it a. Uh, let's make it a green arrow. Do I have a green arrow? I got the green horn. There we go. There's our green arrow. So we can see that as as uh, price was uh, as price was rising, so too was volume, and as price had been pulling back. So, too, has been some volume out there. So it's a possibility, um, Brad. The thing, though, about uh, first these triples, you know, you, you need to understand the underlying instrument. That's the very first thing. You know, here, let me just expand. The daily chart really will show what we're going to do next. And that. so the very first thing with, with inside this ETF, you must. This isn't like an option. You must. You must be able to access those instruments inside it so that you can see what they're doing. Now, these instruments, for the most part, are trading on one of the Chinese exchanges out there. So you're going to need to get access to that, and you're going to need to see how they're trading and take a look at the patterns there, because that's going to be more reliant than what we might see inside a triple ETF out there. Now, that's the first element that you've got to do if you want to successfully trade this. The second element and you can take a look at all of these gaps out there. So that alone looks unusual, right? Why is that? That's because you've also got a second element that you must control if you're going to trade this properly. What's that second element? That second element is understanding the currency pair. So here at the top portion of my screen, we've got Yang. The center portion is the Chinese yuan. And down below that is the directional correlation, the average over a 10-day period. Bars above the zero threshold line, it's pretty easy to see, tell you there's a directional correlation on average over the 10-day period and bars down below it tell you that there's a uh, inverse relationship. So for the most part, what we have out here is a directional correlation between the currency pair and how Yang trades. And so, and I want you to be successful at this, Brad. I don't want you to, you ask me a, a simple question, which is, hey, you know, volume went up, you know, and, and price went up, and maybe this is going to form a C point of an A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, if I put all of my best tools out here, trying to identify where that might be, we'd say, well, it's already blown through support. Support would have been the bottom of its uh, daily profile. It's below Stevie's green line out here. We're taking a look at a daily time frame uh, chart. Uh, maybe there's an A to B equal CD to the downside, right? How about that? That's a possibility out here with regard to Yang. We can easily draw that pattern in. That would look something like this out here. Um, so is it an A to B equal CD to the upside, or is it the 
A to B equals CD to the downside that is in place as we, or potentially in place as we speak right now. He, he, this is close. It's, it, here's the A to B equals CD that gets you all the way back down to the bottom. I won't answer that question because I can't really answer that question. And the reason I can't is because I, I don't have access to the Chinese marketplace. I don't want to pay the uh, fees for it and then go figure out what everything is doing and then deal with the currency pairs. It's just, it's too much work for me to do and to uh, trade uh, properly. So uh, this is really the best information that I can provide for you, Brad. I appreciate you writing in, absolutely. To answer your question, could this be the pullback of an A to B equals CD to the upside? The answer is yes, but I don't have any way of being able to identify where that pullback might be. I mean, I suppose you could use a Fibonacci, but there are, uh, there are other influencing factors that are way more important than TAS market profiles or Fibonacci retracements or anything along those lines. You've, this is an animal. So uh, anyways, I'll, I'll drop that at this stage of the game, but uh, I hope all that uh, helps you out. Uh, no other questions. So let's just kind of go through the, the markets here in general, but uh, you can reach out to me at 866 866 877 Not sure who the 866 number is, but uh, it won't reach me there. Or you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. So let's just take a look at the run through the general markets, get a feel for what the market conditions are. If we take a look at the um, at, at this this tool here, it takes a look at the indices and just simply where they're trading, indices or some commodities, where they're trading in relationship to their 2019 highs. Because the most basic of principles out here is if you, and especially coming out of the January bottom, right, the market typically forms a, a little top in January, pulls back into the end of January, then it begins to take off into the May, July timeframe. And so when you can really get past, if that's the way that the market plays out and you get past the 2019 highs, it tells you the market is breaking out. So that yellow line that you're looking at in the ES Mini is 32.44.50, closing basis is what we're looking at out here because it's a line chart. But you can see that's in breakout mode above 2019 highs, the NQ above it, the Dow above it, the New York Stock Exchange above it, the Russell 2000 is above it, the semis are above it, the S&P is above it, the Dow itself is above it, the NASDAQ Composite is above it. The only thing, and right on it right now, is gold. Gold's trading at 1570.50, 1569.60 is the number there. Silver well below its 2019 high, as are uh, T-bonds at this stage of the game. So what can we say about the equity markets? They're in breakout mode. They're in breakout mode. Uh, we're just simply using the 2019 level as a, an area to be taken a look at. Let's look at our TAS daily profiles. The ES mini above the top and weekly. It's above all profiles, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Same with the NQ. The Dow is up above its weekly, up above its quarterly, up above its monthly. They're not shown here, but you just have to trust me on that. And if it can close above, the YM that is, can close above 29,362, that'll be in full out bullish mode out here. The Russell 2000 found resistance earlier in the day um, at the top of its weekly profile at 1687.80 uh, out here. The top of its daily is 1707. So it's lagging, but it's just lagging. Otherwise, the markets seem to be bullish based upon profile levels out here. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator, it's above zero again. Um, and the question is, can it stay above zero for a second day? If it does, then it's in full out breakout mode out here. Uh, what will likely control that will be the spot volatility index. Right now, that is, may, is trading at um, 1452. 1439 is a 50 day exponential moving to average. And the low that we've seen out here today is 1438. So we've tested or it's tested and rejected the 50 day exponential moving average. So that is not in full bullish full out bullish mode out here. That's the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. But if you do see a close below that 50 day exponential moving average today, 1439, the canary will have flown out of the coal mine, telling you that the coast is clear with regard to the markets. Uh, if I take a look at uh, this really for subscribers out here, not that you can't listen in. One of the things that we were looking at this morning was the fact that the uh, S, uh, that the uh, both the S&P and the uh, Q's equal weighted ETFs, those are RSP and QQEW respectively, that there was a divergence. That divergence inside the Q's has gone away. There's folks out there. I listen to them periodically. I, you know, they're on the, they parade them out on Bloomberg, Bloomberg TV, CNBC. 
so forth out here. And in, in you, you, you hear this theory too, right, folks? Where yeah, people will talk about there's just a few stocks. It's just a small little basket of stocks that are making the market explode to the upside. Well, excuse me, as Steve Martin used to say. Only he said it a whole lot better than I did. What the Sam heck are they looking at? If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So before we went to that break, that uh, Steve Martin uh, visit out here, uh, you can do this work. When somebody tells you something, uh, and then it, typically the way this works is somebody says something and somebody repeats it, people just simply get lazy. And I'm not referring to you out there, but get lazy and don't actually do the work and pull things up. And, and then they just convince themselves. And if they convince themselves of something that's just absolutely flat out wrong, then it is influencing their decisions out here. But anyone who has told you that, I mean, you, you know what they say, uh, figures lie and liars figure out there. So you, you, you're familiar. Instead, just do the work yourself. For example, you can put on your chart. I know you can. Any of you that are chartists, you can put QQEW. And you can, whether you can do it on the same chart or you put it side by side, you can put the Qs out there. And in the QQEW, Apple has the same weight is all other 103 other instruments or 99 or whatever it might be out there. So no one is weighted any differently. So they all have to do the work out here. 
and the work is certainly being done by everybody inside the equal weighted ETF. It's at a new all-time high as well. When divergences exist, that's when it's a warning shot. You can't really trade off it. You've got to look for other signals on the charts out there. Uh, but there's no divergence at this stage of the game inside the Qs. There is inside the S&P 500 out here. So, and it's just by a tad at this stage. If the if the RSP, that's the equal weight for the S&P, closes above 118.40 is the number. You're at 118.12 as we speak right now. 118.40, there will be no divergence out here inside the S&P 500, you know, which is much less, it's weighted, you know, not as not as uh, strategically, let's say, as the QQEW. And we obviously, we've got more instruments out here, or the Qs, I should say. Um, but And there's a slight divergence there. So reason to be paying attention out here. But... Um, uh, you can do this. You you can do this. Where you know the next time somebody says that to you, and usually it's with regard to the Qs, and you can say, well, have you looked at that QQEW lately? Because it is a new all-time high. In fact, a lot of times, you know, you'll hear people talk about a lack of participation in the market. Isn't that really the conversation you are and I are having? Well, what you can do is you can you can call BS on them. Before Steve shared with you the mere fact that right now today new york stock exchange is not a new all-time high but it's advanced decline oscillator i mean it's advanced decline line is right now as we speak inside the new york stock exchange it's advanced decline line is at a new all-time high that's not how bear markets begin. Bear markets begin because you have some kind of divergence, because you have price moving higher, and you don't get the confirmation inside the advanced decline line and things of that sort. That is not the case. If anything, the advanced decline line is saying, mm, hold on a second here. We're in a bull market. Totally, totally. In any event, let's go to a couple of questions that have come in here. Let's get to these. We don't want time to slip away. So the first one was Akami, Akamai, A-K-A-M is a ticker symbol. Uh, the reporting after the bell. Any thoughts on it uh, short term? So here's the daily time frame chart for Akamai. And here's what we know. On the trading day of January 24th, this topped with a uh, bearish reversal candle, though, which is important because price was also moving higher to a less relative energy. That was Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern. Now, remember, when you get a topping signal, the real responsibility of sellers is to try to bust through support. So where are levels of support? You and I use TAS market profiles. We use Stevie's green line as inflection points, and we use the TD9 count breakout and breakdown areas. Well, in this case here, all Akamai was able to do was push down to support the bottom of its daily profile. At that stage, it was right around 93.03. Since then, there's a new profile that is formed. And the new profile is kind of capping price, the top of the box, 96.54, and Stevie's green line. They're all at about that same place out here. So I don't have a real good read on the daily time frame. What, um, you know, is there is there some type of call? There's no breakdown. We've got the topping signal that's out there. Price hasn't taken it out. So I can't really say that this has, uh, that this has moved uh, topside. All right, and it's ready to break out to, uh, because it got the topping signal. So I don't have a really good call here. Would I exit the trade if I were in it? No, because no levels of support have broken it. But would I take a trade prior to earnings out here? No, because I don't. I've got more of a neutral uh, signal than anything else. Ninety-three forty-one would be support. That's the bottom of its daily box. If it closes below that, well, then it could be a move down to eighty-five thirty-five on the weekly time frame. Here for Akamai, let me uh, populate this. What do we have? We've got um, no confirmed growth momentum indicator top. I've got a wave seven top out there, but still everything looks bullish. Price above Stevie's green line on the weekly, on the monthly time frame here for Akamai. What do I have? Uh, this looks bullish as well. Price above the top of its uh, uh, monthly profile. Uh, yeah, we're looking at a monthly chart. It's above its monthly profile. So this all looks good. It, uh, it, it looks good. But on the daily time frame, uh, you know, so the weekly and the monthly look very good out here. The daily, um, I'd have to be more neutral on it uh, more so than anything else. Uh, GBTC is another, that's a Bitcoin trust, GBTC. So let's go take a look at it, look for signals. Let's look at these on the uh, daily time frame. Uh, the daily time frame, you are in wave number five, that's letter E. This looks uh, bullish on the uh, daily time frame as well as prices taking out a resistance level. That resistance level is 1256. Uh, so that is uh, bullish. Where is it headed to next? Let's see if we could try to figure that out as I uh, work through a couple of 
issues here. Come on, don't do that. So the key area here, I don't know who asked, somebody in the den, uh, SNP. If it can close above 1256 today, that's bullish because we'll have overtaken a second TD9 count breakdown level. Now let's go to the monthly time frame chart, see what we can see out here on it. And on the monthly time frame chart, we can see that uh, prices above Stevie's uh, green line. That's bullish out here. Price is likely headed to 1475. So 1475 on a weekly basis is going to be your next resistance area. Close above that would be nice. Looks like week number six of a TD setup nine count. On the monthly time frame chart here, not enough data, so to speak, out here. We did uh, did bottom with a TD nine count. And uh, looks like this is headed to 1890. But you've got some other resistance levels, the daily and the weekly, that we looked at out here. Primarily, I think it would be the weekly. Um, and so it looks like a bit Bitcoin Trust is headed for the 1475 area out there. So I hope that that helps you out, SNP. Let's check the, uh, see if anybody has sent in an email here. Those are clear as well. So uh, what else should we uh, look at? What should we spend the next about a minute on? Let's go look at, let's go look at the markets. Let's see what there is to look at out here. Martin Marietta. Let's take a look at there. The leader dollar-wise to the downside, MLM, is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go take a look at it and see what, uh, what signals this is generating for us, if anything. That's there we go. So what Martin, Martin Marietta, come on, open up. There we go. So Martin Marietta... Today is confirming a road's momentum indicator top. So price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Today is the first bearish reversal candle out here. And uh, what does that suggest? And price is trading down below its daily profile. So Martin Marietta may be pulling back to its breakout level of 222.57. We don't want to conclude that just yet. Oh, this is the weekly time frame chart. So this is a weekly bearish reversal candle. So ixnay to that. If the close, if this was Friday in the close, we would say that. But it's not Friday, and it's not the close, so we can't say that. We have to come back to the daily time frame. And so we'll finish looking at Martin Marietta. MLM is a ticker symbol. We get back from this break. Basil Chapman will be hosting a 90-minute live webinar for subscribers to his daily trading service, The Opening Call, Thursday, February 13th from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Basil will host his live webinar titled The Dark Cloud Cover, an Essential Market Analysis. In this 90-minute webinar, Basil will discuss the techniques he uses when identifying market downturns using his Chapman Wave, including how he uses specific ETFs like the SMH Semiconductor ETF as a connection canary in the coal mine leading indicator when looking for market downturns. By identifying particular weaknesses in the market technicals, Basil is able to identify the severity of the market reaction, and this is just one of many topics he'll be covering. To sign up now for the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss out on this special 90-minute live webinar with Basil Chapman, Thursday, February 13th. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? 
taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So Martin Marietta, ticker symbol here is MLM, formed a nice bottom back here in the trading day of January 28th. Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out here. Had a nice bounce up into about the 278 level price below Stevie's green line, 270.33. If this were really bullish, that would have held. So we've just got a consolidation pattern out here. Price likely had it to test the bottom of its daily profile at 261.15 out there. So speaking of the Rhodes momentum indicator, let's go take a look at the short term time frame charts, see what signals they are offering us just to give you a feel for what's going on in the markets as we speak. If we take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart here for the ES mini, you're going to see that atop this morning on bar number eight of a TD nine count price was moving higher, doing less relative energy. The key level to be watching out here right now is 3359. The bottom of its box is right about where we're trading right around 3361. And the key breakdown pre breakout area is 3359. The close below 3359. Uh, two bars on a 30 minute time frame would bring 3334. 3359 is the breakout area. There are buyers hanging out there. Let's see what kind of strength they have on a pushback there. Let's go take a look at the NQ for the same time period. Well, maybe I just expand. This will be a little bit easier to drag off the screen. There we go. Let's take a look at the NQ chart out here. Let's pull this over. It's 30 minute time frame also with Rhodes momentum indicator top. And right now, price is pushing its way back to support, which is the bottom of its 30 minute profile in this 9552 ish type area. So price is sitting at support. You'll watch that any close below that on a 30 minute basis could bring the 9465 area into play. That's the 30 minute breakout level. The Dow itself, the Dow is up 22 points. But if we take a look at the Dow equity futures contract, what we will see is this also top with the Rhodes momentum indicator topping signal. Folks, you want to learn this pattern. I teach it to you. You want to learn this pattern. It will help you immensely in every single thing that you trade for every single time frame. Watch 29, 229 in the Dow. Any close below that, 29,088 is the breakout area to be watching. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Have a terrific Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned. Two more great hours of programming are left. you got David White right up next. And after that, Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. And I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday.